they're heavy, you know, you put the weight on your shoes, um, really uh, not necessary. And if you decide you don't need them, you gotta strap these things to your pack and carry them, right? So this is one of those tough decisions. Now, if you're leaving the car and there's two feet of snow, <laughs> you're gonna want these. Um, they're technical, they got a lot of teeth on the backside, right, so they can grip into the snow really well. Um, they also, this brand, uh, the MSR, they have an option to add an extender on the back because the smaller they are, the less float you have in the snow. So if you buy the extender, you have more float, which means you won't sink as much into the snow. Um, and you know, you just have your rotating, you strap them onto your shoe. Um, you know, it's kind of a novelty around here, but uh, if you really want to go into snow camping, um, really deep snow, there's a whole market and a whole thing about buying snowshoes, and I'm not really going to talk about that today because I don't think it's going to be useful to you. Um, but anyway, you can look at them up close. They're pretty cool. All right. Next, we're going to talk about the thing that always gets cold when you're out in the cold, and that is... My face never gets cold. I'm hot-headed. Uh, my hands are always getting cold. It seems like the hands are always getting cold. And I've got a bunch of options here for you. For keeping the hands warm. Okay. So, you know, I think a lot of people will go out to the store and they'll, you know, they'll go ahead and grab a pair of gloves like this, right? You know, it's, like, it's kind of thick. They're like Gore-Tex. You know, these are some <clears throat> what seem like nice gloves. My problem is when I put my fingers in an individual sleeve, they all get cold. So some genius at some point said, oh, you know what, we can do something about this. Let's, we don't really you know, need all of our fingers all the time, so let's use, let's put all our fingers together and make mittens, right? So I really recommend if you have any kind of you know, issue with circulation or anything like that, or you just have cold hands, or you're gonna be out in the cold, Get yourself some mittens. Mittens are great. Now, um, I also highly recommend pass those around. Well, just a regular Vortex glove. Uh, is I got these for Christmas. I had a different pair previously, but these are liner gloves. So these are just some real thin but warm, lightweight gloves, and I wear these pretty much from when I leave the car to when I get back to the car. All right. One of the reasons is if you go to take a picture or you know, use your phone or you're going to take your tent apart or you're going to light a camp stove, um, you don't necessarily want to expose your skin to the elements if it's you know, 20 degrees and blowing wind. But you also, you know, certainly, you, you can't do a lighter with this, right? So by having the liner gloves, you can take your mittens off and you still have coverage. So I highly recommend that you layer even on your hands. And these, these mittens are actually kind of cool because you can, without taking them off your hands, you can poke your hand through. So I can leave them on my wrists and so I don't lose them. So that's kind of a cool feature. Some of the newer mittens have those and then you just pop them back over. So I will pass around the mitten. And there are, you know, most of them are adjustable and things like that. And then um, I've also gotten to test some new, these are called pogies. And they've taken the mitten and they've gone up the next level, the final level. You're then gonna put your thumb in with the fingers. So now everything is in there together and that's really goofy, but it works. And one of the ways it works is, again, you can push your hand through. All right, so I can leave these on at all times. The other point is that this hole here, which it does close up, um, a little out of repair on that, but it has a little magnet that closes it up. My trekking pole, which if y'all use trekking poles or ski poles, you're out in the snow, goes up through that hole and I can hold it. I can hold my trekking pole on the inside. I didn't bring my trekking poles, you have to take my word for it. But you can move along and my trekking pole comes up through here. So those are pretty cool, called Hokies. Uh, available from Yama Mountain Gear. That's who I tested those with. And uh, here's a liner glove, you can pass that around. What kind of material are the pogies? Are they waterproof or are they? They're, these are not waterproof. They do make a waterproof shell pokey, which is literally just like see-through fabric, and then you can wear any glove underneath it. Um, but these are meant for you know snow conditions when it's not actually raining, it's, it's snowing. And uh, they are water resistant on the outside. They're a synthetic, uh, synthetic material. 
On your hands, you want synthetic because they're going to be getting sweaty or you know exposed to the elements in the rain. Like Any questions on your hands? Does that help anybody? So layer even with your hands. Okay. What else did I talk about? Oh, face. Uh, your head. So my base layer for my head is uh, what's called a balaclava. You've seen these before. And it's, it's sort of like a ski mask, right? It has like a hole here for your eyes. And, uh, and then it sits. I always end up doing this and regretting it, but I have to put this on to show you how it works. If you haven't seen these before, these are, you can get these for like $10. So you can wear it if you're warm, you wear it down here. If you're a little cold, you wear it like that. If your mouth is cold, you wear it like that. And if you're really cold, you get up like this. So you have a really versatile piece of gear. Gives you a lot of different positions. And you can also just wear it like a hat if you get it just right. So I it's like a neck gator out of the kitchen. I mean, well, you can pull it back, but it would be really tight, this version. They do have, uh, I'm trying to think what they call those now, but they have an, it's, it's a little warmer than a neck gator. Um, maybe they have a winter version. Yeah, above. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's base layer. And then over top of that, I'll add my classic like winter hat with ear flaps that really keeps me nice and warm. Um, this also has strings I can tie around my neck if I want to. So this is like layer number two. The other thing is when I cook my dinner, um, I put my pot inside here for it to like you know rehydrate in the heat. So it's kind of like an insulated pot warmer. Tea cozy, kind of big enough for you. Okay, and then if things get really cold, really windy, you can wear a ski mask. Every time I've taken this on a trip, I end up not using it. So, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, if you have conditions, if you know you're going to need it, bring it. But if it's borderline, you're probably just going to be ducking in and out of the trees, and you might be okay, you know, just doing this for half a mile. And last but not least, don't forget your... Um, Sunglasses, because if it's sunny and snowy, uh, really, really harmful to the eyes because you're getting sun from above and the reflected sun from below. And don't forget your sunblock. So, so you were in a hurry. Yeah, every skier knows how that works, right? Um, so I just always keep a cheap, cheap, cheap pair of sunglasses in my backpack and pack because I really like it. And if they break, I'll just get another pair. Uh, I think I have made it all the way through my layers talk. Does anybody have any questions about that? Great. If you think of anything, just shout out. Uh, I think the part, yeah. I do have questions. Uh, for socks, are you wearing super thick or are you just wearing thin and wicking? I just wear thin and, and wicking. Yep. Everybody's a little different about their socks, even in the summer. For me, I've got fairly well insulated um, shoes that I'm wearing now, and then I put the the extra waterproof layer over top, and it really holds in the warmth pretty well. Other questions? So, you know, I think we've all probably been out in sub-freezing temperatures to go for a walk, a day hike, or something like that. That's not super intimidating. I think where it gets intimidating is when you talk about spending the night out in the snow, right? Uh, you know, you think about trying to sleep and you're cold. Uh, there's Keith right there, actually. <laughs> uh, so, keeping warm at night is a challenge, uh, especially if it gets really cold. Uh, and, and I do have some tips for that. Uh, where did I put it? Okay. So tip number one is go to Wally World or wherever and buy yourself one of these five, six dollar blue pads. Now when you see somebody out, you know, in August and they've got one of these, I think most of us that have been backpacking for a while are kind of like, newbie, you know. <laughs> why, why don't you have a nice inflatable Neo Air 4.5 with R value 22 and, you know, um, this is the cheap, this is like what, you know, backpackers, the Boy Scouts used to use stuff like this, right? In the winter, I strap this on the outside of my pack, and it's the first thing that goes down when I get to camp, 
right? And now, on top of the snow, I have a, spot, a space where I can lay out my gear, it's above the snow. If I need to sit down, I can sit down on it, my butt doesn't get wet. Uh, if I want to take a lunch break, there's room for three or four people on this thing. We have a bench now, we can sit in the snow, and we can sit on there. And it doesn't take me unpacking my pack to get to a camp chair or anything heavy like that. Um, and then when it's time to go, roll it back up, pack it up and go. So I highly recommend that you bring one of these. Now, this is not the only sleeping mat that I use. So when I get my tent set up on the snow, we're talking about camping on snow now, folks. This is getting serious. Doesn't happen very often in Tennessee, unfortunately. Now, I do have an air mattress, and this is my normal, and this is a whole other story for the lightweight, uh, lightweight backpacking session, but you'll notice I don't have any kids, okay? The reason I only have this is because I only sleep with my shoulders to my knees on the ground. Under my feet, I put my pack, and under my head, I put a pillow. So why have all the extra weights? That's another topic for another day. But now when I put this on top of my foam sleeping pad, I have double the layers. So that makes it really nice. Plus, you know, when you're packing up your tent, snowing outside, being able to have the foam pad underneath where you can knee, you know, you can knee on it, you can sit on it, and you're not sinking down into the snow is really, really nice. So highly recommend that you double up with those. Any questions on that? There's so many different options uh, that really the only thing I think I can tell you is get the second layer and get that foam pad. That's, that's my tip. All right. The next thing is where the magic happens. And this is magic, and it's called down. Mother Nature invented it. And this is my pride and joy. My zero degree go light sleeping bag, and it is absolutely amazing. So, y'all see how thin this is, right? And how that packed down. We're just going to set that up there for a second, let it do its magical expansion. The other thing I brought is a liner. This is a synthetic liner. You can also get a silk liner. These are pretty lightweight, and they're thin material, but they add five to ten degrees to your sleeping bag. And, uh, and if they do work, I, I recommend one. Um, they allow you to scale your sleeping bags a little bit better. So I personally only have, I have a zero degree bag and I have a 40 degree bag. And then I have this liner. So the liner, because it adds 10 degrees, I can go in the summer with just the liner. I can go with just the 40 degree bag. I can add the liner to the 40 degree bag and go down to 30. I can bring the zero degree out or I can add the liner to the zero. Or if I want to go real cold, you could add the 40 over the top of the zero, but um, that's, you know, I talk about Minnesota, that's Minnesota weather. So anyway, um, I must have been mean to it earlier, it's not puffing up like it would, but I'll let it sit there, it'll get nice and puffy, but um, I can pass on the wire. This thing will keep you warm down to zero degrees. A lot of bags are not like that, right? They say 30 degrees and you're like freezing at 40. So, a couple of things that I highly recommend if you're looking at buying a cold weather sleeping bag. It's going to be 40 outside, there's some, uh, some flexibility. So this sleeping bag is kind of novel, it only has a half zip. So the zipper only goes down halfway. Zippers are one of the weak points in your sleeping bag. So if you can eliminate half of the zipper, you just eliminate half of the weak spot. So that's kind of nice. Uh, the other thing is, do you really need to zip all the way down to your toes when it's 20 degrees outside? No, probably not. So go light was kind of cool and they took that away. Um, the most that I do is I might sit in and I might sit up inside my sleeping bag, but that's at the bottom of the zipper where my torso um, would hit the sleeping bag. So that's pretty cool. Most important feature with these sleeping bags is the draft collar. So on the inside of a really cold weather sleeping bag, you have a collar that goes around your neck, and if I can find it here, I know where it's at when I'm inside it. Okay, here we go. And then there's a, a tube here that you cinch down, and it takes that collar 
that's around your neck, and it closes it up around your neck. Something you're like, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's a little claustrophobic, but it, it closes that down because all this body heat that's building inside that sleeping bag, if you don't cinch down around your neck, it leaks out. So you're using all this extra energy. If you can close that down, you keep really warm in here. And then this also has that second cinch collar tube, which is just going to be around your face. Right, so you can close down around your face as well. So you kind of have like two sealing areas. Let's get a little puppy now, so it's looking good. But anyway, those are some features to consider. Did they think about their zippers? You know, are they well baffled? Some of the zippers you'll see on 40 degree bags, there's no cover for the zipper. All you see is just the zipper. You can almost see right through where the air would go through. So every cold weather sleeping bag should have a covering for the zipper to cover both the inside and the outside to insulate there. And then you want to look out and make sure it has a draft collar. Okay. Uh, yes. If your bag doesn't have a draft collar, and if you have a spare shirt, the teacher, you pull it down and put it around your neck like a neck beater, it helps a little bit. It's a great thing. Yeah, or any kind of load, loose clothing you can just put around here. Just make sure that you don't um, have the risk of strangulation. Because <laughs> if you get things that are too wrapped up around here, weird things have happened. So just be a little cautious about that. At least if you die with the draft collar, you have somebody to sue. <laughs> <laughs> your benefactors. Um, okay, so the next thing is, you know, that for me pretty much keeps me warm down to around zero, maybe negative 10. Uh, but sometimes, you know, depending on how you feel, you get a little cold. So I bring along extra pair. These are thermal underwear, right? So these are, uh, these add a lot of warmth. And then I also have my thermal underwear top. These are real thin, real lightweight. I just carry these with me all the time. And most people, when they're sleeping, get cold on their feet. Yes. Anybody have that problem even at yes. home? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Try wearing these at home. I dare you. It won't turn out. You'll have sweaty feet. These are down booties. And this is, uh, these are REI brand. But I can wear, I can, I can honestly sleep in a 40 degree sleeping bag, you know, when it's snowing outside if I have these guys. Uh, so if you're thinking about maybe I need a new sleeping bag, maybe it's cheaper. Uh, and, and lighter for you to just buy some down booties and, and these are soft on the bottom and everything you can wear these right inside your sleeping bag so if you want to pass those around they're not super expensive do those back down real tight? they do, they, they're down so they, they smush down you know as thick as the sole basically so those are some additional things you can do. Now, you can also do tricks like boil water before you go to bed, an analogy, and put that in your sleeping bag. Um, that's a nice trick. Uh, you can also take a stone if it's near a fire that you've got going and warm that stone up. Um, I, I don't like putting things that have been in fire, near fire inside my sleeping bag. Uh, I don't like putting water inside my sleeping bag uh, just because if you wake up and that's leaking. Uh, if you do put any of those things inside your sleeping bag with you, make sure, make sure, 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 that it's not going to burn you. So have some kind of insulating layer around it. Um, with an algae, you can pull like an old sock up and over it, um, or put it inside a stocking cap or something like that that'll keep it away from your skin. I also always, every backpacker knows this trick, but you always have to bring an extra pair of wool socks. Um, the key part of this extra wool sock idea, though, is that in the next day when you wake up and your other pair of socks is wet and frozen, you have to take off the pair of dry socks and go back to the wet socks. Because if you don't, now you have two pairs of wet socks that are frozen. So keep a pair of socks only for your dry sleeping bag. Look at how puffed up that sleeping bag is now. <laughs> I almost want to crawl in there. It's so cozy. Okay, any questions about uh, about sleeping? Yeah. So this set up you are outside of the tent? Uh, I don't know if I have cowboy camped outside of the tent. Oh, okay. No, it's been 
either in a shelter or in a Okay. Yeah. Um, 